Bone Allen Sports. Uh, Tommy, yeah, how are you doing, man? I'm doing well, man. Thank you so much for doing this. I just wanted to start off by telling you that I watched some of your speeches uh, and the timing with Kobe and his daughter that you would understand Vanessa's position. Yeah. But something you said stuck out to me, and I'm going to add this to my, uh, my repertoire of great quotes and insights. You said, death is a thing that happens in life, not a thing that happens to life. So make your life count. Yes, sir. That is freaking awesome. I love that. I said death is a thing that happens in life. It's not a thing that happens to life. So my job is to go and tell everyone that is living to make life count. Make it count. I, I don't care. league leading defense took over from there forcing three more Packer turnovers first Tommy Harris forced to fumble by tackling Brett Favre mid handoff you sacked quarterbacks or famous quarterbacks Dante Culpepper Brett Favre Donovan McNabb Drew Brees Alex Smith Aaron Rodgers and Joe Flacco of course when you were with the Chargers which one was your favorite all of them all of them okay is there any <laughs> is there any quarterback you wish you would have got um, uh, except Peyton. Oh, uh, I think I got Peyton and Brady. I think. Well, I don't know if I, I hit Brady a bunch of times. I don't know if I actually sacked him. You know, as a Bear, you always played the Packers a lot. When Aaron Rodgers smiles or smirks on the field, did that ever piss you off? No, no. Aaron, Aaron's a great guy. You just know he's. When when you see that smile, that means he's in. That's a dangerous smile. That's like the Mamba. That's uh, when that smile's on his face. Yeah, he's about to strike. That's when he's in his... <laughs> when you so, see that smile, something's going his way. So you didn't take that personally then, like a lot of other players did? No, I'm real good friends with Aaron. Because I saw the disruption that you allowed for others to wreak havoc, especially in 2006, um, I personally believe if you had played in Super Bowl Forty One that you would have been the difference. Can you tell me, what what do you believe? Do the Bears get a ring if Tommy Harris plays? No question. No question. No question. No question. They <laughs> couldn't. Peyton admitted it himself. He couldn't. He wouldn't have been able to run a stretch. You know, the stretch is what opened up. That's what played with the safety, the high safety. So Absolutely. whenever you hold that, but whenever he hold that ball out, and and then he pulls it in, and that safety doesn't know whether it's run or pass. I would have took away that option of him holding that ball out. I probably would have took his hand off. Him against him. Took his momentum, jumped over the top of it, back in the backfield. Ooh, I like that. That's like good that. stuff. The Bears are who we thought they were. And that's why we took the damn field. I was at the famous, they are who we thought they were, you know, Cardinals game. I remember Bears fans leaving the stadium congratulating all the Cardinals fans on, on messing up the Bears' perfect yeah, season. Yeah, by the time they got to the parking lot, they were going crazy. Oh, yeah. And they, they're, they're, you know, all of a sudden, the Bears, you're, you're got, you guys turned into the 85 Bears just like on a dime. I've never seen anything like this, to be honest, okay? Um, your quarterback was atrocious. I'm sorry. I'm, you know, I'm not trying to be mean or anything, but Rex played badly. And, and only the special teams and you guys scored and still won the game. Now, Denny Green, may he rest in peace. But my question is, who is it that he thought you were? <laughs> the the better who we thought they were. But we let him off the hook. And if you want to crown them, they crown them. <laughs> they crown them. <laughs> Uh, but that sounds like a man that knew his job was on the line. And that's what he was saying, that we knew who we thought they were. Like, we all knew they, they were beatable, that they were touchable. Like, mm -hmm. we showed y'all. But y'all are still about to fire me after this, so I'm, about to, I'm mad. That's what the sentiments were. That's what I thought. That's exactly what I felt, too. And I, I'd never seen anything like this, this game before, the way it just the tide turned. And I thought... I, I I thought nobody's beating this Bears team. It, it, they're just this is ridiculous. Um, even when you guys had your I thought your worst game, you still did that. Well, guys, we we were those guys were were different. Erlacher, Lance Briggs, Charles Tillman, Mike Brown, Nathan Basher, Hunter Hillemeyer, Tank Johnson, 
you know, Alex Brown, Wale, all those guys were special. Mark Anderson, I could name the whole group. They were that good. I remember all of them, absolutely. They, that was a great team. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. But they are who we thought they were, and we let them off the hook. Come from. Rogers sacked by Tommy Harris. Defense number 91, he is ejected from the game. 15-yard penalty, he slugged the player in the head. In 09, you punched Deuce Latouille in the face. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the back there of Tommy Harris. Tommy Harris rolls him over and, and then takes the shot. And as you can see it. But I've always wanted to know, what did he say to you or do to you that got you that mad? If you watch the first three, day, the first three hits, out of the gate, I hit uh, Warner, uh, Kurt Warner. Blitz coming, and Warner just dumps it off. Tommy Harris ends up on top of Kurt Warner. So we come back out. Now, this guy is like, he's the right guard, but he ends up on me every play with the left guard. I've never seen this in football. Why right. do you keep jumping me like you? I'm I'm rushing on the right side of the football. He leaves his responsibility to come blindside me or hit me. My knee was already bothering me. I had to run a pirate on one play. They had me line up over him on the next play, and I ran a pirate, which is going from the B gap to the A gap real fast. And he begins to trip up my legs and start kneeing me on the side and doing all this dirty stuff. So I told him the next time he bothered me and messed with me that he was going to feel me. And it's Tommy Harris who did something as you look at this defense for Chicago to Deuce Latouille. Wow. It, so it, I just kept my promise. That's all I did. He he was kind of a hothead anyway. He he, he got in a <laughs> lot of competition. Well, afterwards, I apologized. And uh, Fitzgerald called me. That's one of my close friends. And he oh, called me and he said, you know, you know, they told, uh, they told Deuce Latoui to do that. Really? They told him, oh, yeah, they knew they couldn't stop me after the first drive. So get into his head. But that's the way the league is. 15 yards, first down. So it's not just a 15-yard penalty, but Tommy Harris is ejected from the game. Now, you are part of one of the most famous drafts in NFL history, as well as one of the best players that came out of that group. With Eli Manning recently retiring, uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts at the time about the Eli situation with the Chargers and all that. How did you view it, and how did the other guys view it at that time? At that time, we viewed it as what it was, what it still is today. Um, an insight league. Uh, you knew he had more insight on you, but... Um, as you get older and you have a chance to look at it at, through the lenses of hindsight, you see that uh, that's just the blessings of being uh, having a father, you know, that played in the league and then a brother who ended up being so great in the league right. that, I mean, they, they basically put him in the greatest position. And I understood it now, you know, I didn't even know about Chicago, but Michael Jordan. I didn't know nothing about no shuffle. I heard about it, but I grew up in church, so football wasn't our first subject. I just had to act like I knew about it. So I didn't even know what city I was All I knew was uh, the Bulls, and I knew Oprah lived there. So <laughs> when I saw, as I got older, and I saw that he had an opportunity to switch franchises, you know, that was like a father picking a, a perfect business for his son to be successful, and it, and it happened a great market for him. You know, he probably made twice as much off the field than he ever could have made in San Diego market. No, I'm saying at the time, uh, we thought it was unfair. Like, wow, why he get to pick where he want to go? <laughs> you know? Right. That's what I was wondering. Like, how did you guys feel? Because I would have felt like, come on, man, I'm just happy to be drafted and you're sitting there acting like um, mm -mm. you can do what you want. It's, no, it's I thought I was that. Well, actually, I saw Eli was excited, but you saw his father was. And he was like a good father. It's like my son, and I know my son getting drafted in the, in the Cincinnati Bengals or the Cleveland Brown wants them, like, at that time when they weren't, like, I, and I played in the league, and he has a chance to go to the Patriots or the Seattle Seat. 
Like, I, I want to put him in the best situation possible also. So. Of course, of course. But at the time, San like Diego, said, man, no one cares who you are. <laughs> it, it's like, they'll tell you, have a good day. They don't, they don't want an autograph. They don't care. That's how I felt in San Diego. Like, it was totally different from coming from Chicago. While you were there, was there any anything that you saw that may have given you um, confirmation on why Archie Manning didn't like them? Was it ownership or general manager? What was it? No, it wasn't ownership or general manager. It was, it was the laid-back culture in football. So it, it was a market. Basically, your market sets your team, the seriousness of your team. Right, like if you're sitting in Miami, that that's a very hard market to take football serious. But it's impressive when it does happen there, in the, right. in that kind of market. If you look at New York; that that New York market is a very expensive market for a player. Just think of the living there, and think of the hustle and bustle of the city. Think of the blue collar workers in that city. So that that the attention on that team means a lot. It's a heartbeat to that city. Same right. way as Chicago. Certain city, Philadelphia, has that same love. Green Bay, the town has taken on that big city living and put it in the one town, saying that this town owns this team to give it its infrastructure. So it's it's the seriousness of the team when it comes down to the to the uh, the the basic the logo, whatever whatever that team that logo means everything to the city and the player got to know. I, I knew in playing for the Chargers, all I could think about was Ladanian and Junior Seau. But when I got there, it was such a, a disconnect from Chicago, like totally laid back. Like I could see why a father wouldn't want. And then after seeing what happened with Drew Brees, you know, like that wasn't a franchise that you really wanted to, you wanted your kid to go to after seeing so many other great options. The game was last night against Detroit. Back on third and ten, down he goes. Back at the 13 yard line. Tommy Harris has had a big day. Now he lost the football, and now the Bears have it. Israel Adonaji, the pressure. Tommy Harris, the recovery. Did you do a workout for the Patriots at one time? Yes, I did a workout. The workout for the Patriots went well, but uh, Belichick asked me a serious question. He asked me, this was like year eight. He asked me, could I practice every day? Could I see myself practicing every day? And I told him no. And uh, he said, well, that's not the Patriot way. Because my guys practice every day. And uh, I was like, I don't practice every day, Coach. Not at this age. It wasn't a willpower. It was, It was. would you respect my, would you let me heal? Right. Or is your way that important that you are going to make me struggle healing and trying to keep your way? I didn't want to do that. And then uh, it was just a whole nother environment. It was very um, Wall Street, like business, 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 military. Even more so than Lovey? Man, Lovey wasn't. Lovey was more like uh, Bible school. Really? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was Bible. You're going to have fun, but you're just not going to have, you're going to have fun in some type of order. But you're not, you can have fun though. But it just can't be no cussing, no talking crazy to one another, respect each other as men, but no craziness. That's what's lovely. Okay, yeah. Bill but I always like saw him like, as. You no know, playing. No. Lovey's like Dungey. The respect of men. They respect the, the camaraderie of brothers, love one another, respect each other, respect your families. That's those guys. Belichick was like, we don't play here. We don't laugh here. Nothing's for light. Let's work. Right. Okay. So I'm, and all I'm, my guys I'm, that knew my sense of humor, they all were telling me like, no, don't come here, man. You're not going to like it. <laughs> so. Oh, man. You know what? You your, your personality would have fit now, I think, because I think Gronk really lightened up Belichick some. Yeah. A, a little. But uh, you definitely would have fit in. In this in this version of the Patriots, I really believe. Now, I have a, a question from a huge Bears fan who works for us here at Fun Island Sports. He wanted to know what your favorite moment as a Chicago Bear was. I don't know, man. There, there, there's been so many. Well, what are a few that stick out to you? I would say my first moment of running out of the tunnel as a Bear. 
on Soldier Field. I could barely even see. Yeah, I could barely even see. It was so sunny outside, but you would have thought it was a thunderstorm. That's how hard I was crying behind my face mask. Really? So, uh, yeah, it That's... meant so much that like I, I finally made it. Like it's happening. And no one knows the fear for every athlete that he goes through to get, until he gets to that point. You know, everything is you want want everything is almost real. You play preseason, you play, but you haven't quite made it in the NFL yet into that first play of. So you're right. really trying to make it there with no injuries, with nothing off the field happening, and I made it. And when they introduced my name, it was like the first time I said in my mind I was going to the NFL. It finally all matched up. God, that must feel great. And, and you know what? It did work out. I mean, you were that, you set a record for the uh, highest contract extension at your position in history. Yes, sir. That must have been pretty, pretty, pretty awesome as well. Yeah, it was cool. It wasn't enough. After uh, like six months later, Alvin Hangel was coming to get a hundred million. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I had the same deal on the table for 80 if I waited one more year or took it with another team. And uh, we didn't. And all the other agents that said they could get it, I didn't believe them. So I stayed with Drew Rosenhaus. And we ended up just taking the 40. And then like six months later, Albert Hainsworth came and got the $100 million. Which that, of course, ended badly anyway for him as, a, as far as a player goes. I'm not even sure what what happened with him. Like I know there was some issues about was he lazy or didn't want to work or something. I don't know. They said they said uh, it's it's hard to uh, it's hard to fight when you start sleeping in a uh, silk sheet. Yeah, I mean, you know, when you're in when you're in those little cotton sheets, it's easy to get up and go to work out, and you don't got a bed spread. But when you start making a hundred million dollars and you're sleeping in silk. You know, and sad and all these good things. <laughs> uh, that kind of make it. You can call me lazy all you want. You gave me a hundred million. Right. They said that about Conor McGregor after he fought Floyd. Oh Mayweather. yeah. Yeah. You can tell who cares. If the money matters to some people, and some people it doesn't. That is so true. It's a very good point. In two thousand five, six, and seven, those were all your Pro Bowl years. Oh five was the year that you were an All Pro. But in my opinion, wasn't 07 your best year? I remember I used to get uh, player of the weeks a lot. And I know players weren't getting that at my position like that. Right. So I could never even understand why I didn't. I, I know I got an injury and then it started going. I started making back-to-back Pro Bowl. Like I've never, I only had played one year that I was in the Pro Bowl. Like the alternate. Right. That's what no one knows either. Like I was all every other season, I was a backup, or alternate backup. Oh, I didn't know that actually. I only knew of the times you yeah. started. Yeah, and all my seasons. Started, yeah. I, and what's crazy is the ones I was alternate. The guys that I let in when I couldn't play were my alternates, and when I needed them to let me in, they didn't give it to me. <sighs> nice. Yeah. Who they? Yeah, you make a phone call and a guy calls you and, hey Tommy, I, I know you're not playing this year, and it only made sense that I still get to go to the Pro Bowl and you get to go to and you get your bonus from your team to help your family go. But exactly. He didn't let me go. <laughs> and he didn't play in the game. Who? I won't say his name. <laughs> Blitz of the night. Watch it coming off the weak side of the formation. And you're going to see McKinney struggling to the outside and right up the middle again is Tommy Harris. <laughs> It's my team. It's my quarterback. In the era we were talking about around the Super Bowl, uh, the time they went to the Super Bowl, and those years you were in the Pro Bowl uh, as a starter and all that that we were talking about, you guys had like Grossman and Orton and guys like that. I always felt that you were like one great quarterback away from making multiple Super Bowl runs. Did you guys ever go to Lovey or general management and complain or make demands and say, listen, man, get us a quarterback through free agency? Did you guys ever no, do that? No, man. Not, not, I know I didn't. I, I never talked upstairs like that. Um, I, was, I never got to be one of those guys. 
I was close, but then I couldn't make myself be it. But um, we we never. I respected whoever they put under, uh, whoever hands was under groups. So I didn't really care. I just wanted to worry about whooping the A gap and the B gap wherever I was aligned. Um, I, after my career is over, and I look at all the what makes a great defense alignment or what helps stats and it, what what usually comes in is a, a good off a good quarterback so that defensive tackle that usually plays with a good quarterback or somebody that allows them to uh get on and off the field properly they usually have great stats I had a guy call me for the Hall of Fame and he was asking me about Olin Krups and different guys should they deserve to go and all this other stuff. And then he asked me, do I think I deserve to go? And I said, well, yeah, if you look at what I did so early, in my early part of the career before my injury, I was on pace to being not like I was unblockable. What I Absolutely. To him, what he said. So. Steps up. Down he goes in the play made by Tommy Harris. What a stop. He um, he started talking about with my numbers. And I said, well, let me tell you this. I said, man, if you put a cheetah in Alaska and, and, and grade his hunting, how do you think he'll perform? And I said, if the, if the NFL started to measure um, a barometer of how they base these athletes, you take me from the south my whole life and put me in the snow and ask me to rush a quarterback outside. Yeah. And then you compare my stats to guys that play in domes and play in the hot sun all day and look at their numbers. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. What, what, if, you, what if you played in Detroit or Minnesota, for example? If I get the proper foot and I can't be stopped. Gosh, you man. put me on any good field with a good turf, I can't. I'm going to tear up. You put me in Soldier Field, that's the worst field. Soldier and Hines is the worst field to work on. He just kept playing. He was on the ground a couple of times trying to get his footing, and he just kept playing and then saves what could have been an easy touchdown. Hey, can you answer this question for me? So I asked the of Hall course. of Fame guy, right? Like, because I, I, I just been, I just started watching myself, like really comparing to other players and stuff. Who have you seen that has my first step? I've been waiting to see the what I I see clowning has it at times. Sometimes, yes. Clowning will give you something so explosive at one moment and then it'll just go away. JJ Watts had I don't know what JJ Watts was like, more of a tractor. Like once it gets going, you can't stop that. Okay. But I I always try to look and find that player like that they that, that I could re- like, okay, even Sap and me and Sap game was totally different. Like I was like Aaron Donald and Sapp are more like each other to me. They, they're more of a know what to do after their – my job was like a blur. I'm not as big on and, and high on Aaron Donald as everyone else is. I mean, he's a great player, but yeah. – I got you. I'm just I'm – just, I hear a lot of guys, they say it, it's hard. You know, when you've been so involved in your art, it's hard to step back and look at it. Sure. But then when you look at it, you're like, man, okay, what can I compare it to? If I'm, if everyone's saying I'm I'm good and I'm this, then you know you start getting word like, like why am I not one of the? Like I looked at that commercial that they did last year. I think it was like the NFL commercial. Me and my son was watching it, and they were throwing the ball and all the guy. It was like the decade team. Like I missed the decade team by a point. Are you serious? And it was all the yeah. Mm-hmm. From being wow. a decade on the all, I needed one more Pro Bowl. I would have been on the All Decade team. Smith in trouble, and he's going to get dropped by Tommy Harris back at the 21 yard line. Agulier got the initial pressure. Harris gets the sack. Line lets him down. You're going to see heat coming off his right side here from Tommy Harris on a tackle in stunt. And Blaine get- And Tommy, I know you were the cover boy for Sports Illustrated as a Sooner, and like you dominated in college, you dominated in all levels. But you know, as a historian and somebody who's watched the league for a long time, and in the history of the league, you know, you dominated in a way that was comparable to Deacon Jones in his day. You you had like, Deacon had his patented move that became illegal. 
And in many ways, they had to change, like, because of the way you had to be blocked, like you were talking about earlier against the Cardinals, the only way to block you was to block you illegally, and the refs just kind of ignored it. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's what uh, I went up to Dallas and talked to the D-line, and uh, Garrett said that to me. Because Garrett, he said he saw me in the office with Marinelli, closed the door. He said, do you know you used to give me nightmares? And he went oh. to the drum board. He said, I had to switch up our, our whole offense. He said, you created this. And so the backside week when you got a double on the backside of the three technique, he said, nobody was doubling down on the three. We were letting it go free. You were the only dude that could run through that and get to the court. <laughs> he said, we had to create a whole new blocking scheme for you on the backside of every play. It's got to be just pure pass rush. This time they drop, you know, they drop their seven. There's four guys rushing. By some pretty average teams. And Flacco's going to go down. And that is Tommy Harris. Herrera has really struggled at right guard here in the first quarter. And I go back to the defensive line coach of the Chicago Bears, this is Rod Marinelli. I was with them four or five years. This guy. Morgan in motion. Defeated to Gore again. And Tommy Harris oh, was that drops good? him for a loss of a couple. That was really well done by Tommy Harris. Now, Tommy, is there anything that you want to mention as far as a charity or something that you're involved in or your church or anything? I know, just TommyHarrisLockerRoom.com. TommyHarrisLockerRoom.com? Yes, sir. just check that out. Or go to TommyHarris.com if you want to know any information about me where I'm speaking, what I'm doing, those two. The locker room is where I go and do ministry with uh, men. And then uh, TommyHarris.com is where I have my speaking engagements and all that stuff. So, and videos and content that I'm doing. That's awesome. One of my biggest interests is is the Bible and to be to be a Christian and to talk about it openly. It's almost it's almost like it's becoming a bad thing. I don't know what's happening in society exactly why, but have you noticed that? Yeah, I, I've noticed it. Yeah, it's like people are trying to almost get rid of it, or it's it's taboo to talk about it. You know, and. Yeah, well, they started it when they started taking prayer out of school. It's just the, the, the ripple-down effect of that. Sure. You know? They made fun of Tim they Tebow and all that? Yeah. So. Yeah. But that's what God said. The Bible tells you they're going to do that in the end time. They're going to scoff at us, laugh at us. But you got to stand firm. I think we're seeing that everywhere. Like, everything that should be normal has been flipped up side down you know yeah i'm seeing it everywhere yes sir you're very good you got a gift for it so keep doing it god bless man thank you so much All right, god bless you. we hope you enjoyed that interview with tommy harris and we want to thank him so much for his time the nfl was only the first chapter for him tommy is also a singer he gives motivational speeches and christian sermons around the country you can find more about Tommy by visiting the websites listed on the screen and the links in the description. For more Von Allen Sports content, please subscribe and click the bell icon. And don't forget, we're live every Saturday at 6 p.m. Eastern, only on YouTube. Thank you so much.